Bow with me in prayer, would you? Father God, thank you for your presence with us this morning. Thank you that we have already felt you from the very beginning when Tracy started the worship service with song all the way through. And Lord, we rejoice in the fact that we can know for certain that we will be with you the moment that we breathe our last. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that your grace does cover us and washes away all the stains of our sins. We rejoice, God, in knowing that we are accepted in your sight because of the powerful work of Christ in our lives. And we thank you, God, for the privilege of being able to know you in this life, to be able to live for you, and to be able to know one another and encourage um, and strengthen each other. I thank you, God, for this family of faith. Uh, and I pray, Lord, that you would help us just continue to uh, strive to serve you and make you known within this community. We especially pray for this week, and we pray for... Uh, Vacation Bible School for all the workers and the children. And we pray, God, that you would just do a mighty work, that you would speak to hearts and minds, and that you would draw them to yourself. We pray now, Father, that you would speak to us afresh through your word. We thank you for the Bible, for the truth that is there for us to glean. And we pray, Father, that we would faithfully take your word and apply it to our lives and thereby live out a life that would help other people come to know you, and a life also that brings blessing not to ourselves, but to everyone around us as we uh, faithfully seek to become more and more like Jesus Christ. It's in his holy name that we pray. Amen. We have been working our way through one another's in the New Testament. Uh, Jesus started uh, with uh, love one another. He said, this is the new command that I give to you. And then throughout the New Testament, we see a number of one another. So we've looked at prefer one another, greet one another, comfort one another, uh, encourage one another. And this morning, we're going to look at one that um, is probably a little bit challenging for most of us. It's not one that I would say would be my favorite to exercise nor is it always well received, but the scriptures tells us to admonish one another. Our uh, focal point for scripture is Colossians 3.16, though we'll look at other passages, but it says, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. You know, I would say if for most of us, if we had our choice, we'd rather not do this at all. We, we would just avoid this. And, and to illustrate that, I want to share a story with you. Uh, it seems that there was a man that was scheduled to speak at an important business uh, dinner. And uh, while he was eating, evidently he, he bit down too hard on uh, his food and suddenly he realized he had broken his false teeth. And he was petrified with panic. And he turned to the gentleman next to him and he said, I can't believe this, but I just broke my teeth, my false teeth. And I've got to get up in a few minutes and I've got to speak. No problem, whispered the man next to him. He said, I've got to extra pair you can use and so he pulled out a set of false teeth in fact he had several he tried on the first ones they were a little too tight it's almost like you know Goldilocks and the three bears the next pair were a little too loose and then the finally the third pair they fit just perfect and he was relieved he finished his meal he got up he gave his address to those business uh, men and women, and he, he, was just, he was just elated. And so after uh, everything was over, he went back to his benefactor and told him, he said, I just so appreciate you rescuing me and providing me with those false teeth. He said, I've actually been looking for a good dentist for quite some time. He said, where are you located? And the gentleman said to him, he said, I'm not a dentist. I'm an undertaker. I know. 
Now, watch me craft this into a, weave this in, okay? <clears throat> the point being, for most of us, we would rather not admonish one another even if it required someone else's teeth. Did you get, get that? But the scriptures admonish us to do so. And so we are going to look at God's word and consider what we are called to do. Um, the word in the New Testament uh, for admonish, it literally means to place in the mind of someone. Okay, so um, admonish really means to bring something to light, to allow people to realize what it is that they need to do, okay? It's, it's not fixing everybody's problem. It's not stepping in and uh, getting them all squared away. It's simply bringing something to their mind. It's placing something in their mind. Um, in the New Testament, it's translated admonish. It's also translated to counsel, to warn, or to instruct. And I believe a good definition would be biblical admonition is moral correction through verbal confrontation motivated by genuine love. Okay? Now, the outline is very simple. Uh, the scripture addresses those who admonish, uh, those who receive admonishment, which in your outline is, I called them the admonishees, which all of you English teachers, I know that's not really a word, so you can admonish me about it later, but um, I just wanted to show those who are admonishing, those who are, who are recipients, and then everyone some general direction about admonition. So let's look at it. Um, first of all, to admonish, we, we need to, in all humility, approach somebody else who uh, needs some correction. And there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. And I'll show you the wrong way, okay? I'll illustrate it with a little story. It seems that there was a gentleman who had, had come to a very upscale restaurant and uh, when he uh, got ready to be, uh, uh, while well, he was seated and he was ready for his meal to come, he took his napkin and he pulled it up and he tied it around his neck like a big bib. Um, well, that got the attention of the maitre d' and the maitre d' said to the waiter who was serving him at that table, he said, please go over to that gentleman and he said, with care and understanding, Make him aware that that's just not the proper way to use a napkin in this establishment. To which the waiter then just went up to the gentleman at the table and he said, A shave or a haircut? That is not the way to do admonition, okay? Colossians 3.16, we read it earlier, it says, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, with psalms, hymns, songs of the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. It starts with the message of Christ dwelling in us richly. In other words, uh, when we admonish one another, Scripture should be the very basis of any admonition. It's the message or the word of Christ. That means it's not our opinion, okay? We don't need to share our opinions with everybody. To that, we should all say amen, right? Um, and in fact, I would say that there's been a lot of abuses and probably um, uh, hurts that have happened down through the history of the church because people were passionate about sh sharing their opinions rather than the word of God. We need to be faithful to share the Word of God and the truth of God and allow the Word of God to do what the Word of God does so well. Um, it will convict and transform and change us. Uh, Jesus made it very clear that the Word of God is absolutely vital for us in how we should live. When he was confronted with Satan um, and he was out in the wilderness and Satan tempted him, the very first temptation was... He's hungry. Change those rocks. Those were real rocks there, but change those stones into uh, uh, a bread. 
And Jesus' response was, a man should not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. He was quoting Deuteronomy. He was quoting God's word, and his response was the word of God. Got to live by it. Got to use it. Um, it needs to be the basis for uh, all that we are and all that we do. You see, the word of God is very powerful. And if we, um, if we share that with people, it can make a difference. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 4, it says, the word of God is living and active. Okay? This isn't some stagnant book. Okay? It's living and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It's able, it penetrates even the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. You see, what God's Word does is it's, it's a book of transformation. And when, when we share the Word of God with people, God's Spirit will use it in their hearts and their lives. If I came to you every Sunday morning and I simply shared my thoughts, quite honestly, you shouldn't show up. And quite honestly, I shouldn't show up because a lot of my thoughts aren't worth anything. But if I'm faithfully sharing the Word of God, guess what? I'm giving you the living water. I'm giving you God's bread, His life-giving source, because that's what this is for us. So it's not about any of us just sharing our opinions. It's about sharing God's truth. When, um, when Justin got ready to go away to college, there were a couple things he sat me down to, to uh, get me ready for. First, we only had one computer, and it was in the basement at an office desk. It was kind of public use, and he said, Dad, come down to the basement. And he got the computer on, and he said, here is your Facebook account. I hadn't had one, wasn't really interested in having one, um, but he got me started. He also said, you must text. So I was brought into the 21st century. Um, I determined once I got on Facebook and started seeing everything and making friends, and probably many of you who are my Facebook friends uh, know I do this, I thought, there's a lot of neat stuff out there, and I like all the, th the neat things that people share. Um, but I thought, I want to use it for something good, too. And I'm not saying that people aren't using it for good, but I try to put a scripture. Because I know if I just put some of my thoughts, again, it wouldn't be worth reading sometimes. But I just put a scripture out there, and every once in a while, Someone will even private message me and say, Dennis, that's exactly what I needed today. Do you know they have never said that about anything I've written myself? But they have a, about God's word. God's word is powerful. And it meets us right where we are. And so when we admonish each other, we need to be so full of God's word that it's God's word and his love for people that motivates us to, uh, to bring about correction. You find in scripture, when you read the word admonish, you'll see teaching and admonishing go together over and over and over again. And it's kind of like um, the right and the left hands going together because they belong uh, together teaching or training has to do with the right way. This is the way you need to do it. We instruct on how to do the right thing. Admonishing or correction is saying, this is the wrong way. You don't want to do that. Okay? So, and we need both, don't we? If we're going down the wrong path, we need to be told. Um, in uh, in in Ironton, where we were for 23 and a half years, 
uh, this little town along the Ohio River, we had a lot of one-way streets. And you know, there are a lot of people that go down them the wrong way. And every once in a while, you need to flash your lights and honk, and, you know, it's like, ugh, wrong way. We kind of need that in our lives, too, right? Amen? Uh, we do. Every once in a while, we get on the wrong path. We, we, need, we need that admonishment, that correction. And when we admonish each other, we should approach it with the reverence of worship. Notice, the Scripture, again, told us that we're to admonish one another with all wisdom as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Now, <clears throat> I would not say that that means if that over here needed some admonition, I would suddenly sing him a song about it. I'm sure that'd be a good way to drive everybody away real quickly. But what, what, is, what is that psalms and hymns and spiritual songs all about that's about worship is it not and so what the uh, Paul is writing about is he's saying within the concept within the with within the parameters of understanding we are living in the presence of God and we should revere God and honor God with that kind of attitude we should approach one another in admonishing each other because ultimately it's about God helping people uh, to live the way they ought to live. It's not about us fixing them. Now, to the admonishees, those receiving admonishment, um, the problem for most of us is we're not always inclined to receive um, correction of any kind. And in fact, you don't have to be very old to uh, a kind of resist any kind of correction. When Melinda was having her surgery in Bloomington, uh, after they took her, they moved me to this other room, a waiting area, and all of us that were there were waiting for a loved one while they're having surgery. And there was a lady taken right, she was second. There was a lady taken right before Melinda, and she was an elderly lady. And uh, she had, I, I believe it was three sisters and one of her best friends that was there. And, and one of them got out an iPad. Yes, an iPad. They were, they were up and current ladies. And this lady said, you've got to watch this. And they had that speaker on really loud, and it was hilarious what they showed. And it really does illustrate how we resist admonishment. So this little video, uh, very brief, is simply entitled, Lisa, Listen. It's kind of hard to understand sometimes with this accent, but watch this little guy. He's addressing his mother when he's saying Lisa. Okay, but I have to yell at you guys. Okay, what? Like everything they do at this house, they can trust everything at Grandma's house. Okay. Okay, then what? <laughs> then you're not listening to me. Then you're not listening to me. I asked you not to do something. Linda, but listen to me. Look at if we do something, if you get that out, that bird thing off, you're going to break it. Okay, but I'm asking, I'm letting you know but that you cannot, know, Linda, no, Linda, I'm, lick it, lick it. you're not listening to me. Linda, listen to me now. Lick it, lick listen to me listen now. To, listen to me. No, you're not listening. I said no cupcakes, and you try to get cupcakes, and you try to ask Grandma. Linda, Didn't you? Linda, lick it, lick it, lick it. If we do something right out this, if we, if we get close up, you can't even get them. You're going to burn your butt. Your What's going to burn your butt? Like, no. You and Kevin don't listen, so I have to give both of you guys pop pals in your butt. But Linda, but Grandpa's but going to give you pop pals in your butt. No, he's not. Yeah. I have to, you, want, you don't want me to hit Kevin, or you don't want me to spank you? No. Why? 
Because anybody oh, wants ooh. to spank me. Then I have to spank Kevin. He's your little pop ups, but he doesn't listen. But Lumba, honey, honey, look at, look at this. Right oh, now, you can't do anything oh. if we can't get everything out of the wall. Oh, if we're gonna break everything down. Oh, I'm not breaking anything down. I'm just letting you know Lumba, you cannot it, have it, cupcakes it, for lick dinner. Lick it, Lumba, Lumba, like this thing, I never belong to you. Anything, you can't get anything and anything and anything. I'm done arguing with you. I'm done arguing with you. You need to listen to the things that I say because I'm the mom and I'm the dog. Linda, look at, listen to me. All the time to get them to, to, to stink. To, to, to stink. To, 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 to can't get I'm them. Can't done break. arguing with you. Linda, I'm done arguing with you. Okay. <clears throat> I'll say a couple little comments. First, I believe his future is in litigation. Um, <clears throat> and his whole point was, hey, Mom, Linda, at Grandma's house, everything's supposed to go, and you're not supposed to mess with anything. Um, and was he taking correction from his mother well? No, no. Um, and... So it, 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 it starts at a young age. And so the scripture um, it encourages us to understand that to be corrected is actually for our good. Um, in uh, Proverbs verse, uh, chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. Now, when I was raising, when Melinda and I were raising our kids, Stupid wasn't even a word we were allowed to use, you know, but that's what the scriptures say. If we, if we don't want correction, it's not wise on us at all. Um, we, we should desire correction so that we can grow. In 1 Thessalonians chapter um, 5, verse 12, it says, Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you who care for you in the Lord and who admonish you. He's reminding them as believers to honor those who care enough to bring about correction. He says, acknowledge the work of the one who admonishes you and recognize that that uh, admonishment is an act of the Lord's care for you. The fact of the matter is, <clears throat> whether it's physical children or whether it's spiritual children if we don't care enough to correct them we don't really love them we're not really showing love toward them if we don't help correct uh, wrong uh, in their lives and we when we are recipients of that we need to um, we need to in humility hear what God has to say to us, no matter what position we have in life. I'll share a story from my previous church. Elizabeth Cardwell, a wonderful saint of the Lord, she and her husband Chester, had, uh, they had been foster parents for 65 different children. They had had them for a while, took care of them, had three children of their own, adopted two foster children, and in her later years, she was having some heart issues. She was in her 80s at the time, and she was uh, put in the hospital. She had already seen the cardiologist uh, in the wee hours of the morning the night before. She had had some heart tests done, and, uh, and, and I was there for that, and I was in the room when the cardiologist came in again to give her a report. And he told her everything that was going on, and he said, do you have any questions? And this dear lady said, yes, I do. Do you have a family? He looked a little strange at her, and she said, yes, I do. I have a wife and two children, boy or girl, two boys. How old are they? Four and six. Do you ever see your children? 
well, ma'am, I'm pretty busy, and with my kind of schedule, I'm not home a lot. And she said, don't you think you owe it to your children and your wife to make sure you have some time at home with them? I am standing there in the room just kind of cringing as she's talking to her cardiologist. But I'm thinking, she's probably right. Now I happen to know him, and he sent his children to the same Christian school that we were sending our children to. And within a week, I started seeing him every afternoon because he would come and pick his kids up from school from that point on. I talked to one of his employees in his office, and they said to me, quote, we don't know what happened to him, but he marked out the afternoon so that he would pick his two boys up, and he goes home and he has dinner with them, and then he comes back to the hospital again. But he's got about a three-hour window in the afternoon and evening for his boys. Now, I'm telling you that there was a man who by all, I mean, they, they built a building and named it after him. He, he by all rights could think, hey, I'm so important, I don't need to listen to anybody. But he listened to one of his elderly patients and he took that admonition and I am certain that his family life has changed and the future of those boys has changed because he humbled himself enough to say, I'll take that. I'll do something about that. So <clears throat> we need to understand when correction comes, take it and receive it as love from the Lord. Now, just a few final things uh, for every one of us. Um, in Proverbs 19, verse 20, it says, Listen to advice and accept discipline. And at the end, you will be counted among the wise. We need to receive those things because it will help us become more wise in our dealings, uh, in, our, in our own lives. In Colossians 1, verse 28, it says, He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone full, fully mature in Christ. What was Paul's goal, he's saying? in teaching and admonishing uh, all the believers in the church is he's wanting to present people mature in Christ. He's, he, he's wanting to help them grow and develop into good followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. It still all comes back to that foundation of understanding that it's through God's word. I'll close with this story. True story. Um, this is many years ago. An atheist stood um, in one of England's great uh, mill complexes, and he was harassing the mill workers about the inaccuracies of the Bible and the myths and the fables of the Word of God. And an old, uneducated mill hand interrupted him by saying that until he had, until recently, he had been a vile sinner, that he... Uh, he was a curse to himself, and he was a curse to his family, and he pretty much cursed everybody he knew. Um, he heard, he said, the blessed story of the Lord Jesus, and he opened his heart to Jesus as Savior. And after that, he said, I'm a happy man, and I'm a blessing to those around me. And he asked, if the Bible is false, then why is my life changed? To which the man who had no faith in God whatsoever had no answer either. You see, when we're talking about admonishing one another, loving one another, encouraging one another, any of the one another's, we're talking about just taking God's word seriously and living it out. And guess what? God's word will transform us. And I bet you if we went around this room, we could share a whole lot of stories of where we were 
and where God has brought us. And it involves a total change, but a change for the better. Bow with me in prayer, would you? Lord God, we thank you for your holy word and that it's true. We thank you that through your word, we know what Jesus did for us on the cross. And we know that we can be forgiven and accepted and made right in your sight. And by your word, Lord, we also know what is right and wrong. And we thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit who through your word corrects us. But we thank you for also, Father, for our brothers and sisters who sometimes point out things in our lives that we otherwise might not see. Help us, Lord, to be humble and receptive to the truth that you have for us so that we can grow up and be mature in Christ. And Father, for those times in which you impress upon our heart to share something with someone else, to admonish them, to bring correction, may we do it in a spirit of love and Christ-likeness that shows your genuine care for each and every one of us and leave it to you to bring about the transformation in each life. We commit all these things to you, Lord, knowing that you and only you can bring it about and you also should receive all the glory and honor and praise for lives that are changed and transformed by your power. We pray in your holy name. Amen.